Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Judges, chapter 7, and verse 1. Your King James Bible, that is. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Just so that you know, Jerubbabal means uh, let, let him strive with ball, which basically means, uh, it's another word for Lord, but it became so associated with Satanism that the, um, the God of Abraham said, don't call me that anymore. So it's basically uh, Gideon, and what he did was, is he broke down the altar of uh, Baal, the false god, and uh, and then everybody wanted to kill Gideon for it. But then Gideon's dad said, uh, well, you know what? Why don't you let your false god, well, I'm paraphrasing, why don't you let your false god fight Gideon? Basically, that's what he's saying. What, your false god can't uh, defend himself? You know? Uh, I, that's the Bob translation. So, all right. Judges chapter 7, verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harod, so that the host of the Midians were on the north side of them by the hill of Mora in the valley. Now, if memory serves me correctly, let's see about the, uh, the Midianites. Now, the Midianites were, uh, and the Ishmaelites were who Joseph was sold into slavery with, if you recall. So I'm, I'm assuming, you know what they say about assuming, that uh, the Midianites were associated with the Ishmaelites. Maybe they're one and the same, maybe they're just neighbors or whatever, or intermarried, I don't know. So... They're getting ready to have a war with the Midianites. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. In other words, no, nah, the Lord didn't save us. We saved ourselves. We're strong. We're mighty. We're Israel, right? Uh, no. Verse 3. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned to the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. So they just lost basically two-thirds of their army. Verse 4. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. You know, he's going to test them. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, This, shalt, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Uh, all right, we're getting ready to read verse 5. Uh, and by the way, Jerubbabel is um, some kind of a Masonic code word. Um, it's been a long time since I've studied Masonry or the Masonic Lodge. It's been a long time. I don't remember what it's all about, but uh, it's some kind of a Masonic code word. So if you see it, just remember it could be Bible or it could be Masonic. It could be either one. All right, verse 5. So he brought down the people under the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. 
And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand. Uh, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, victuals, uh, that's where you get the word vittles from, I believe. Let me make sure about that. Yeah, it means food. Um, it's uh, victuals. Uh, it's where they get the word vittles from. But it's an obsolete word. Now they say provisions. So if you were going to say, let us buy victuals for the military, now you would say provisions. So, so basically, uh, it's food. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent, and retained those 300 men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. You know, there's a... Because when people don't understand about the uh, what happened with the Canaanites in Genesis 6 and why they were giants, all right? I mean, I'm sorry. Believing men don't marry unbelieving women, and then they have giants for children, and then the Lord says to go kill them all. That just doesn't happen, people. Well, tell that to the mega churches. That's what they teach. I know better. There's a reason why the Lord said to get rid of these people in the Canaan, the Canaanites. And yeah, I know they were evil, but they were born that way. For I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Fura, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as a sand by the seaside for multitude. The Amalekites, though they were, they were always enemies with the Lord. Guess who they were? They were children of Esau. You know, Esau, Edom. Yeah. God didn't like the Amalekites. You know what the Lord says about Amalek? Exodus 17 and verse 16. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war, war with Amalek from generation to generation. What does that mean? War with Amalek from generation to generation. Uh, Chaplain Bob, that just means that when, when Jesus comes, we got to tell him about the love of Jesus. I don't think so. The Lord's going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Yeah, Amalek was a grandson of Esau. Well, you know what? You want to know what the Lord says about Esau? Obadiah 1.18, And the house of Jacob shall be a flame. And the house of Joseph, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. And the house of, jo of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. But, but Chaplain Bob, that's Old Testament. Jesus loves everybody. Uh, well, if you say so. 
Let's go back to you, Judges 7.12. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream, a dream. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's that dream. That's what this series is all about, right? There was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and there came, and came unto a tent, and smote it that it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the 300 men into three companies. 300 men, three companies, a hundred each. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, Ah, uh, how many trumpets are in the book of Revelation? Seven. Yeah, yeah. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So here it is. You're going to have 300 guys blowing the horns yelling, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. Now they're making a bunch of noise here. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers, and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now, remember something. They had just changed the watch. All the guards. Now, those of you that in the military, you understand this. But those of you that don't, have never been in the military, you don't understand that. When you're changing the guard... And something goes on, uh, you know, the new guy is thinking, oh, they've infiltrated us. So, you know, here it is. They're thinking that their camp has been infiltrated and that they're going to be in a battle and they're not prepared. So they're making a lot of noise with the pitchers and they're blowing the trumpets. And these people are scared. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. Even throughout all the host, and the host fled to Beth Shittah in Zeroth, and to the border of Abel Mehalah, unto to Bath. So here it is. Everybody that's in the camp, not Gideon's people, the Midianites and the uh, Amalekites, they're fighting each other because they think the guy next to them is the enemy. So the Lord's letting them kill each other. Verse 23. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh. Now, if you don't know who Naphtali and Asher is, and Manasseh, those are three tribes of Israel. 
And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of, and out of all Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. And Gibeon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and take them before the waters unto Beth Barah and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters of Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zib, and they slew Oreb upon the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side, Jordan. You see, God speaks to people in a dream sometimes. I'm not saying all dreams. I've had some I've had some really weird dreams lately, and I don't know, I don't know. Some of them I'm pretty positive are not from the Lord, but I don't know. All right, well, that's the end of this Bible lesson. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.